This initiative was funded by the National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, Division of Cancer Prevention. Tolerability relates to a patient's willingness to continue therapy, and the FACT GP5 item captures this in a single patient reported outcomes measure. The GP5 item asks whether and how much in the past seven days a patient has been bothered by the side effects of treatment and has been validated as an effective summary of patient reported tolerability. This presentation will demonstrate the GP5's predictive value for early treatment discontinuation, emphasizing the practical utility of using a single item to assess patients' experiences. Results from two ECOG Akron trials that enrolled postmenopausal estrogen receptor positive breast cancer patients demonstrated that the GP5 score at the initiation of treatment strongly predicted discontinuation risk. This Kaplan Meyer plot shows the probability of aromatase inhibitor continuation. The blue line represents women who reported no or little side effect bother, while the red line represents those who reported moderate to severe side effect bother, answering somewhat, quite a bit, or very much. As shown here, early discontinuation risk is significantly higher among those with moderate to severe side effect bother at the start of aromatase inhibitor therapy, compared to those with no or little side effect bother. We first demonstrated these results in the breast cancer E1Z03 trial. The E1Z11 trial offered the opportunity to replicate these findings in a racially diverse cohort of women starting aromatase inhibitor therapy. As shown here, we demonstrated the same results. Moderate or severe side effect bother at the time of initiating aromatase inhibitor therapy predicted early treatment discontinuation. How generalizable are these findings across other cancer types and treatment regimens? We demonstrated in two large trials of postmenopausal women with breast cancer that side effect bother at treatment initiation strongly predicts early endocrine therapy discontinuation. We then explored if this predictive value extends to other cancers and treatment regimens. This slide highlights trials where the GP5 has shown predictive value, particularly in previously treated patients with a good prognosis, such as patients transitioning from induction to maintenance therapy for myeloma, melanoma, or leukemia. As you can see here, the GP5 did not have predictive value with regard to duration of therapy among treatment naive patients or those previously treated and with a poor prognosis. Now that we understand the predictive value of baseline tolerability, what about concerns that arise during treatment? In the endurance trial E1A11 among newly diagnosed myeloma patients, high GP5 bother was linked to an increased likelihood of discontinuation due to adverse events. As shown here, patients with a two-point increase in their GP5 score were 2.2 times more likely to discontinue treatment at one month, 3.4 times more likely at 2.8 months, and 4.7 times more likely to discontinue treatment at 5.5 months. This suggests that each patient has a tolerability threshold influenced by factors like prior cancer treatments and emerging side effects. GP5 is a reliable general indicator of tolerability concerns, but what drives these concerns? Qualitative interviews with previously treated patients reveal the side effects they most consider when rating tolerability. In the two breast cancer trials, prior therapy and medications for comorbid conditions often contributed to high initial bother. This means that the trial baseline may not reflect the patient's true baseline, as they could already be managing side effects from previous treatments, including chemotherapy, surgery, radiation, and comorbid medications. The GP5 item summarizes any residual side effect bother patients may bring to the start of a new therapy. Patients may respond to the GP5 based on their concerns about potential treatment side effects they were informed to anticipate during their treatment. New side effects that emerge during treatment could lower tolerability further for patients and reduce their willingness to continue. 
What can we take away from this? For clinical trialists, if you are using GP5, be sure to administer this item prior to the start of treatment and throughout the treatment process. Remember, the trial baseline may not represent the patient's actual starting point. For clinicians, remember that patients with a lower tolerability threshold are more likely to discontinue treatment early and risk losing the full benefit of therapy. GP5 can be a useful tool in your clinical practice, signifying the need for clinical assessment. To learn more, visit the NCI Tolerability Consortium website today. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, Cancer.gov, 1-800-4-CANCER.